Hey guys, it's PK here. Hey, um, look, obviously a lot of people talking about the government subsidy, um, sorry, the grant, the first homeowner's grant, um, the, the new announcement of $25,000 um, for new builds, um, and also the stamp duty concession. So everyone's getting really, really excited about that. Um, a lot of the people who sell a new stock are getting incredibly excited about it as well. Um, great marketing tactic and, and great marketing technique for, for those who are um, selling new stock and, and house and land packages and all that sort of thing. But just remember, sorry, that's my, that's my son in the background. Just remember that the fundamental principles of fun property investing don't change. Okay, so if you're a um, homeowner or an aspiring homeowner that wants to, to buy their own first home to live in, and these subsidies get you over the line and get you into a dwelling, then by all means go for it. It's a great, great opportunity, great thing that the government has done from that perspective. But if you are anyone else, anyone with a mindset of investing, anyone with a mindset of increasing your wealth, capital growth, etc., through property investing, then don't be lured in by this bright, shiny object, okay? Because the fundamentals of property investing, they don't change. Hey, David, um, they don't change. And the one statistic that I think a lot of people might know about but really don't pay enough heed to is the land-to-asset ratio, okay? So the land-to-asset ratio is simply saying of the entire purchase price of the asset of the property, how much was the land component? Okay, we don't really care how big the land was or how small the land is. It's what's the value of the land as a proportion of the total asset value. And the fact is that capital growth occurs on the land, not the property. Okay, so when you buy new stock, let's say you buy something. I just had this conversation with a, um, a really nice fellow um, about 30 minutes ago. When you buy a new property, let's say it's worth $500,000 you're probably paying about $350,000 for the building and about $150,000 for the land, okay? So you're mostly paying for the new building because it's new, right? And you're not really paying that much for the land. In other words, the land is not worth that much, okay? And so think about it. The building will depreciate and the land will appreciate. So you're only giving yourself about $150,000 worth of real asset to appreciate. Okay, that's the scenario in a brand new building. Now, juxtapose that or compare that against an existing dwelling or an established property where you're still paying $500,000 for the property, but because it's an old property, you know, we're not saying 100 years old here, but something low maintenance but old, you're probably paying $150,000 for the property or thereabouts and $350,000 for the land. Okay, so you're still paying overall the same amount, $500,000, but you've paid mostly for the land. And the land appreciates and the building depreciates. Okay, so in those two scenarios, the brand new, build, the brand new property of $500,000 and the established property of $500,000, which one does better over the first two years, the five years, ten years in terms of capital growth? It's always going to be the established property, right? And also, the established property gives you an avenue, it gives you an opportunity to add value to whether it's structural or just a simple cosmetic reno, that what's is what's giving you the opportunity to add value. You buy a new stock, a, a brand new property, you can't really do anything to it, okay, for a good 10, 15, 20 years, all right? So, all these grants and subsidies and donations from the government, all this is great, you know, if you want to buy a property to live in and you have your heart set on that emotional connection, then this is great, you know, it's fantastic. Hey, Rachel, hey, Jamie. Um, but if you're an investor, or at least have the investment mindset, even if it's your first property to live in, if you have the investment mindset, then the advantage you'll gain from these, you know, um, handouts are going to be completely dwarfed, completely eclipsed in the short, medium and long term from a capital growth perspective. And it's the capital growth that's the engine of your wealth, okay? In a buy and hold strategy.
So I just wanted to say that I've been seeing lots and lots of people um, getting really, really excited about the new grants. You know, a lot of people who sell new stock, good for them. Um, but for sort of the no secret source property investors like me, the land to asset ratio is fundamentally important. And we want that land to asset ratio to be at least 60%. You know, I, I mostly draw the line at about 65, 70% um, plus, but at least 60%, okay? We don't wanna be buying a brand new building, okay? If you lose your job, the depreciation doesn't mean anything, okay? Um, anyway, hopefully that wasn't too negative. Hopefully that was useful. Thanks everyone for watching. Hey Vijay, hey Brett. Um, yeah, I'll probably sign out there. All right, have a good weekend, guys. Catch you later.